Good afternoon, grade uh, five. As I said, today we will start uh, the revision on chapter seven, lesson one, and maybe have a small introduction on uh, chapter seven, lesson two, starting the term okay. uh, three uh, curriculum. So um, in here, you guys can see uh, just a quick reminder of uh, lesson one. We talked about minerals and we said that minerals are natural things. They are not man-made, okay? They are solid all the time and they have specific chemical structure and they have the special shape, shape which we call geometric shape, okay? So that's the name okay. of the crystal shape of the minerals. It's called geometric shape. Gus, if you're not using the mic, please mute yourselves. Okay, uh, so we learned that there are ways to identify minerals. We started with color, streak, luster, and hardness. We said color is the first way, but it's not accurate because minerals come in rainbow of colors. For example, in here we have quartz. It's the same mineral, but it comes in different colors, as you guys can see. So again, colors, color is not an accurate way to identify the minerals, okay, or we cannot use it alone. That makes us move to the second method of identifying minerals, which is called streak. I'm sorry, guys, let me check if I need to admit any of your friends. Okay. So the second method, we called it a streak, and streak is the powder left after we rub the mineral against a rough white tile. <coughs> okay, so again, guys, streak is the powder left, the color of the powder left after the rubbing proce process. So in here, we had an example of hematite. Both of those minerals are actually hematites. They do look different. That's why we cannot say that color is the only method to identify it. Because if I wanted to identify it by color right now, I'd say, no, those are totally different minerals. But no, they are the same hematite. That's why we use the streak, the streak method. You'll see that the color of the powder is the same. That makes it the same mineral. Okay, guys? Okay, do you guys remember these things? I'm moving a little bit faster because we already did this before. Yes, it's so easy, miss. Okay, so anyway, guys, if you have any questions, you can stop me anytime by raising your hands, okay? And then we moved into the third method, which is luster or how the minerals reflect light. And we said we had two types, metallic luster and non-metallic luster. The metallic luster is so easy to identify. It's like, the, you know, in gold and silver and copper. Okay. The non-metallic luster had many types many other types we said that it could be dull like this picture before let me show it to you this one on the right this is dull okay or they could be waxy luster burly luster glassy like in tobaz in here okay and we also learned about burette which has a metallic luster but it looks like gold. It's not a real gold. That's why it's called gold's fool. Oh, fool's gold. It looks like gold. It has metallic luster, but it's not gold. How do I identify this? We can use streak as a, a, a process in order to identify the difference between both gold and burette, okay? So again, guys, in the non-metallic luster, we had many types, dull, glassy, pearly, and wax. So again, what are the three visible properties of minerals? I know. Yes. Can you tell me? Color, luster. Um, yes. And we have color, three. Luster. Yes. Color, rust, luster, and. Um, it starts with S. S tra streak. 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 That's streak. right. Thank you so much. Who's, who was that again? Um. Yes, Alma, well done. So the three visible properties are color, streak, and luster. Those are things we can identify with our own eyes. Then we move to the fourth method, which is hardness. And hardness is how much the mineral will resist being scratched. 
okay? How hard the mineral would resist being scratched. So the scientist who did this scale is called Mohs and he called it by his name, Mohs Hardness Scale. And this scale shows the minerals from one to 10, from the softest, that of course is represented by one to the hardest, which is diamond number 10. And we use this scale, guys, to identify different uh, hardness of different minerals by using the hardness of another minerals. Guys, I can hear my voice, so please mute yourselves because I can still hear my voice. I will mute you all. Okay, so um, we can also identify the hardness by using common things around us. Uh, but first we learn the diamond is the hardest one. This is how, on the left, this is how diamonds looks like in nature, guys. It's not shiny all the time. Of course, after polishing and stuff and giving it the shape you can see on the right, this is how we know diamond. But um, in real life, it looks like the one on the left. Before polishing and stuff. Um, we can use, as, as I said, common things to uh, identify the hardness of some minerals, because if I know the hardness of these objects, that will help me identify the hardness of the object I want to, to learn about. For example, like the coin, it's a three, the fingernail is 2.5, the glass is six, and the steel nail is 6.5. So if something is actually scratched by my fingernail, that means its hardness is less than 2.5. So if I went back to the scale, now I can use, uh, uh, I, I know that it's between two and one. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Yes, miss. Yes, so, so it can for the hardness we can, yes, we can test the minerals against each other in order to know their hardness, okay? Miss of course. The, yes. Miss the finger is stronger than some minerals. The, the what? The, the what? fingernail. Of, yes, the fingernail finger could be stronger. Yes, could be harder than other minerals. Yes, that's right. That's and why we coin. can use common things like common objects around us, or we can use other minerals against other minerals. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> of course, the uh, the the higher the mineral on the scale. The higher the mineral on the scale, the harder it is, and it can scratch anything that uh, is less than it in the same scale. For example, the uh, field spar, field spar can scratch both abatite and calcite, for example, because they are less than uh, field spar in the scale. Gypsum. But yes, guys, please do not speak without permission because you keep making noise and I can't hear all of you. Okay. Um, we also say, well, yeah, feldspar can scratch these things, but it cannot scratch, for example, quartz, because quartz is seven, which ma makes it harder than feldspar, so feldspar cannot scratch it anymore. Uh, then we learned about <coughs> the common uses of these different minerals. Of course, uh, diamond comes in the first. We use it as jewelry, but we also can use it into, you know, reshaping or cutting other minerals and rocks by making it like into this uh, small device because diamond again is the hardest one on the scale that makes it of course uh, harder than all other minerals and rocks. So it would be helpful in cutting other uh, uh, minerals, okay? We also learned about uh, corundum, corundum, which is very hard, which we call also the sand paper. And we use this to make uh, the hard surfaces smooth. And this one actually is before diamond by one number. It's nine on most scale, so it's considered really hard. We also learned about graphite. And this one is used to make pencils. Quartz is used to make glass. Guys, do you remember all of these things? Yes, miss, but I can't understand the picture for this boy. No, it's just I'm showing a glass. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to understand anything in this picture. Okay. <laughs> it looks funny. Oh, yes, yes. it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> iron. This is how iron looks like. The one on the right, this is how it looks like when it's, um, it's, it's found in nature. Yes, it's found. No, it's a mineral, sweet. It's not a rock because uh, you will learn about rocks later. 
It's called a mineral, okay? But no, this but is how I, it looks I like. Not, I know it's not a rock, but it looks like a rock. Yes. But you can see here how it looks like on nature. Of course, after also, you know, reshaping and going through a uh, different process, process, you will have it into different shapes up to the need uh, of the iron itself to be used. Okay, now we have halite, which is the rock salt. This is how it Miss, looks in nature. Yes. Uh, yes. Does, the, does some rocks, doesn't, I mean, some uh, minerals doesn't shine. So some people think they are rocks. Yes, people can mix between rocks and minerals. It's easy to do so. You need an expert to identify the difference. Yeah, you don't know. Okay. Okay, you're most welcome. So this is how halite is found on nature, like the picture on the right. And of course, after breaking it down, clearing it from any uh, dust or anything, you will have it like the one we use for the cooking, okay? Um, then we learned that that was the last thing in the lesson, learning about the unique properties. And we learned about four of them, forming double image, being magnetic, fluorescence, and having electric charge. We started with forming the double image like in calcite, okay? It has the ability to bend light in a certain way that causes us to see double image of whatever is behind it. The second property was being magnetic, like magnetite. This one is able to attract other metals, okay? And it's used in making compass. Fluorescence or glowing in the dark, we can say glowing in the UV light. And UV light, guys, is dark for us. This is the ultraviolet light. We cannot see it, so we see darkness. Okay? Can you see how the mineral looks in natural light? Wait. This is how the mineral yeah. looks in natural light, okay? But when it's exposed to the UV, uh, the UV light or the darkness, this is how it glows. Okay, the last but not least is having electric charge. And uh, this is what we uh, use to, um, to see in movies, how people get uh, to make fire with the rocks. They don't actually make fire with the rock. They make electric charge and the electric charge was, will cause the Mist. fire to happen. Okay, because Mist. some minerals under pressure and temperature, they start making this electric charge. <laughs> Yes. That's why they rub them against each other, so they can cause the the their heat uh, their temperature to increase, and yes. this is why it, they produce yes, yes electric charge. Guys, one of you is saying miss miss miss. Please raise your hand so I know okay. who's talking, and then you can talk when I give you permission. Yes, yes, in Duany. They in movies they they get rocks <laughs> and make it like this, and they make fire and put it in the campfire. Yes. I told you, the, the movement of the rocks don't make the fire, they make electric charge, and the electric charge will cause the fire then. Okay? Okay. So, guys, now we'll move into a little bit of an introduction to lesson, um, the next lesson, which is lesson two. You will compare between rocks and minerals. And this is very important to know. <coughs> Guys, can you still hear me well? Yes. 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 Okay. I'm sorry, it's not this one. Yes, here it is. So now we'll compare between rocks and minerals. Okay, so rocks and minerals are both, both are solids, but rocks are called actually the mineral mixture, which is, which means that rocks are made up of different minerals. Okay. Okay. So again, guys, in the minerals, they are made up of a certain chemical structure, but rocks are made up of different minerals. And they can be organic, which means made up of previous living things. Minerals are found in nature. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes guys, one of you were talking. 
One of you guys was talking. Yeah, that's why I say, please do not talk without permission because I really don't know who's talking. That's why I say, raise your hand first. Give me time to give you permission, but you don't. Okay, again, guys. So uh, minerals are naturally found and they are made of chemical elements and compounds. But rocks, again, are made up of minerals. Rocks can be organic, like we can find some uh, remains of living things in them. But minerals are not, all of them are inorganic, okay? They don't contain any living things yeah. in them. They have crystals, of course, not made of rocks. I mean, they make rocks, so they are not made of rocks. And they have chemical structure, as we said, okay? So uh, crocs, rocks, I'm sorry, are classified by how they formed, and that's what you are going to learn about, the different types of rocks. So again, rocks are classified by how they are formed. Yes, Amu, you're raising your hand. No, Miss, uh, sorry, I raised it. Um, okay, Yasin, Duane, you're raising your hand. Do you need anything? Okay, so I think not. So again, guys, rocks are classified by how they are formed, whether they are formed, you know, uh, by cooling magma, are they formed uh, because of they've been uh, uh, worn away uh, or broken down into sediments, are they formed because of heat and temperature? Um, you raised your hand again. Is there something wrong? Okay. So I think you made it uh, by mistake. Miss no, there's something in Zoom. Let me raise my hand. I don't know why. Maybe you press on something without uh, without meaning it. Okay. Uh, minerals are actually not classified by how they are made. They are classified by the elements and compounds that it makes them. Like they are uh, uh, classified chemically. chemically. What is their chemical composition? Okay. Okay. Guys, I keep hearing myself. I don't know why. I will mute you all again. Yes, miss. Yes. I hope you just, you don't have a problem in hearing me. Okay. Yes, Yasin Duaini? No, you didn't. I just thought you raised your hand. Okay, we'll go back back to uh, the types of rocks. So this is lesson two, guys, talking about the types of rocks. We'll not actually go into uh, a lot of details today uh, because, you know, I'm going to start this lesson to Allah tomorrow. <clears throat> so what are the main types of rocks? We have igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks. Amu, please stop drawing on the screen. And we have metamorphic rock. So if we wanted to start with igneous rocks, and those are the rocks made by magma. Okay. Yasin said it. And Amu, stop drawing on the screen, please. Okay. So again, igneous rock, the first example or the first type of rocks we're having are the rocks formed by the cooling magma. Okay, and they can be formed under the ground, under the Earth's surface, which we call them intrusive, or they can be formed on the top of the Earth, on the surface, which we call extrusive. Okay, and there is a major difference between both of them is that the intrusive are, you know, left under the ground to cool down so slowly. I mean, imagine cooling down near the Earth's center, that will take a lot, a long, a long time because it's really warm underneath. So these rocks that take really long time to cool down will have big crystals because they took really long time to be cooked. Okay, but the extrusive rocks that you know are formed above the Earth's surface, they cool really fast because Miss of the air and the wind. And the yes, wind. so they, and, uh, as they are, they, yeah. You know, cool down really quickly, you will see that they don't have enough crystals. You have two pictures in here. Okay, those two pictures, let me go to them. Back to them again. 
Okay. Those two pictures, guys, belong to the same rock. I mean, both of them represent both uh, igneous rocks. Miss, can I see something? Is this Am? No, Aude. Yes, Aude. But Aude, yani, I didn't Miss, give you permission. Like... Can you just wait a second? Wait for yeah, a second. Miss, okay. I raised my hand. You raised your hand, but I didn't give you permission. Yes, I know you guys raised your hands, but you know, have to wait for my permission. Just give me a minute all day and I will come back to you. Okay. So in here, guys, you will see this rock, for example, having really smooth surface. Well, this one down there is, you know, you can see minerals in it. You can see black and brown minerals forming them. So those are crystals. You will see that this black one is really smooth. Okay, because it, it cooled down really quickly that the crystals didn't have enough time to form. While the other one down there, it actually took a long time to cool down. Those, the, so the crystals found a long time to be formed. Okay, so basically the rocks that are formed on the, the Earth's surface that take less time to cool down, they will never have crystals or big crystals they will have small crystals while the rocks that are formed under the ground they will take longer time to cool down that's why well they will have big crystals yes all day what did you want to say what did you want to say <clears throat> all day uh, miss i see that uh, like the rocks like all of the rocks is made from like the magma not like the magma rocks. do the rocks not all rocks, Not Habibi, only igneous only rocks. Igneous. Okay. okay. Yeah, so igneous okay. rocks are made up of cooling magma. They are actually called, uh, they, we call them uh, the cooled uh, rocks. Okay, or cooled magma. Those are the igneous rocks. Yasin Duwani, you're raising your hand. Yes, do you need to ask or say something? Most is is to use of Nokib. Yusuf Nokib, what's wrong with Yusuf? The, there were two and uh, one left. Okay. So Thank you, Yasin. Yusuf and Nokib uh, make a mute so you hear uh, your uh, voice uh, two times. Okay, maybe there's something wrong with the Zoom meeting. Maybe there's some he left, he left the kind of left. bug. Okay, maybe there is some kind of bug or something with the internet connection. Okay, thank you, guys. <clears throat> now let's move to the... Uh, um, of course, all types of rocks can be changed into igneous. I mean, once they melt by the magma, they can now turn into igneous rock, okay? We have the sedimentary rocks, and sedimentary rocks take many processes to be formed. We say weathering, erosion, cementing together. So this is really long process. Yes. Miss, can I say something? Yes, I'm. Yesterday we read a story in English. It's about sedimentary rock. No, that's really nice. Good for you guys. Okay, we'll watch a video anyway after this uh, this part like when we are closer to the end of the today's session. And uh, inshallah, by tomorrow, I'll bring you guys some uh, better pictures that shows the sedimentary rocks. But mainly sedimentary rocks are made up of sediments uh, from the name. What do I mean by sediment? They are smaller pieces of rocks. Like after they've been uh, broken down, that's what we mean by weathering. weathering. Weathering means to break the rocks down into smaller pieces or into sediments. And then these sediments will move by wind, water, and they still, uh, and they move uh, uh, above each other into different layers, and then they will form rocks. We will learn about this in more details later. The third type is metamorphic rock. And from the metamorphic, metamorphosis, it means to change from one type of rock to another type of rock. That's what we mean by metamorphic, okay? So again, what do we mean by metamorphic, guys? It's to change from one type of rock into a whole new type of rock. 
by pressure and heat. So We're going under changing. pressure and heat. Yes? Jane, you, you said what's the mean of the meta, meta metamorphic? Yes. yes. Okay, I want to say. Well, I, I said it. Yes, of course you can say it. Changing a rock to um, a whole new rock by pressuring, and, by pressuring and heat. By pressure and heat. Yes, that's right. Thank you so much. So here we are showing the rock cycle and how some rocks can uh, change. Just let me admit some of your friends. And how uh, the rocks go also into a cycle to be formed. Let me show to you. <clears throat> okay. So in here we have some questions. When we answer them, uh, they will show us the uh, uh, cycle we are talking about. So first, it says when rocks are affected by weathering and erosion, that means it will be broken down, okay, uh, and then moved by the wind or water, this, this small pieces of rocks, they change into sediments. So, th so first, the rocks will change into sediments. They will be broken down by the wind and the sun and everything. And now, when these sediments come together into one piece and they are glued together, cemented together, they will turn into sedimentary rocks. Okay, after this, when the sediments or any other rock actually is, is um, affected by pressure and heat, it will move into or changes into metamorphic rock. Okay, once they have heat and pressure. As we said before, any rock, if it melted down, it will turn into magma. Magma. Exactly. And when magma cools down, it will become... Igneous. Igneous rock. Yes, exactly. That's right. So this is the rock cycle we're talking about, guys. Okay? Yeah, we got the full mark. Yes, we got the full mark. But it's not moving. Okay. So this is how igneous rocks can change up by uh, pressure and heat into metamorphic rock. Can you guys see the picture in here? Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is how igneous changes by heat and pressure. So heat and pressure can change any type of rock into metamorphic rock. Okay, we have Oday, Amu, and Yasin doing. Do you guys need anything? Because you're ra raising your hands. Yes, I want to answer if, we, if they any any. Okay, Yasin. Okay, so um, yes, let's start by melting. When the metamorphic melts and turns into magma, when the magma cools down, it will become igneous rock, as you said. So here is cooling of the magma. Magma will, of course, flow out. Some of it will cool down on the surface, which we call extrusive igneous rocks. Now this is the magma that is cooling under the Earth's surface and how it's going to take longer time to cool down that will make them, uh, uh, I mean, form crystals. Okay. This is how the rock cycle looks like. So any rock basically can be any other type of rock. I mean, igneous rock can turn into metamorphic rock if it's uh, if it goes under heat and pressure. Metamorphic rock can goes back to be igneous rock if it's melted and turned into magma, and then this magma cooled down and it turned into igneous rock. A sedimentary rock can be metamorphic rock if it's if it went under heat and pressure. Again, if it went under heat pressure, it can be metamorphic. Metamorphic rock can go back to be sedimentary rock if it was broken down by wind or water. Okay. We'll learn more about this, guys. We have uh, less than 10 minutes. Let me show it to you.
to show something to you. Okay. And of course, sedimentary rock can turn back into igneous rock if it melted and turned it into magma. So can you guys see it's a circle a cycle? It never ends. Can you see that? Yeah. There's two ghosts. Yes. Miss, there is ghosts. Okay, so guys, whoever is using a different name, you will be considered absent. So please change your name. Who is the ghost? Open the camera. Ghost. They yes. open the camera and uh, there is four ghosts. They head and uh, put, uh, put uh, glasses. Okay. They are yes. not funny. Exactly, they are not funny. Let me kick them out to the waiting room. No, I know who was uh, was uh, was that rat. Uh, one of them is in her hand. Okay. Yes, one to... of them is. Guys, in please, hand. please stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking and making okay, noise. Okay. So anyway, this ghost is in the waiting room now. He's ghosting himself. <laughs> okay. Um, so guys, guys, I can, can you see that this is a cycle? It never ends. Okay. Yes. Yes, so guys, yes. we'll, watch, we'll watch a simple video and then the meeting Miss is over. Like our life cycle, yes? Yes, like life cycle. Okay, guys, we'll watch a video now and the session will be over. Hope by tomorrow, inshallah, you will have more questions to ask and you will enjoy this lesson as much as possible. Okay?